Without further ado, uh, I'm going to be respectful to everyone who has turned up on time and I'm going to get straight into the content today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna share my screen and I'm gonna be talking today um, about the Income Incubator. So the Income Incubator is a course that we have created and it is also a course that we've had a number of people who have come through the course so we can actually test it which is a really great thing to do if you build a course it's often good to bring in some people and test it just to make sure that it actually meets your outcomes so it's been tested it actually works we've had some incredible results with it already and uh, we've been we've been running courses for quite a number of years now and uh, just to give you a little bit of background the reason that uh, we did this particular course was because we had a whole host of our students all asking us hey rick you know we really love your online courses how do you do them how do you create them and of course the answer to that was so deep and so wide that you couldn't just answer it in a response to a, a post on on facebook or, or to a response to an email it was such a big question to answer because because there are so many functions and elements of building a course now courses uh for the coaches out there for the consultants out there um for the teachers out there courses are a really good, good way that you can actually leverage what you do. For example, uh, something that I will often do is, and sorry, I've been a bit distracted by some of the weird text, um, you know, that is now a feature on Zoom. You know, of course, sometimes it doesn't hear you correctly. <laughs> so anyway, so the thing is that uh, as a coach, something that you can do, and I do this a lot, is I'll be coaching someone and all of a sudden we get to a particular point where I need to educate. And what I can do now is because we've got so much content, so many courses, I could say, right, there's a module that we have in our NLP Master Practitioner Training. So I'm gonna send that to you and you can watch that and that's gonna help you with that thing. And uh, so, as a coach, it's so helpful being able to create courses because they become resources as well. And quite often when I'm uh, talking to potential clients about coaching, something that I will often do is I will often package up my coaching because I'll listen to what they need and then I'll consider what else can I give them. You know, like if they, they're coming to me to build their money mindset or they're coming to me because they want to create more income, then I'm going to suggest that they jump into the Millionaire Master Academy program because that's going to help them to get the mindset and that's going to help them to understand how do you make your first million dollars. So courses can be absolutely fantastic for that. So let's continue with the content and essentially let's discover how to actually create online courses to get you off the nine to five hamster wheel and enjoy more time and more money. So this webinar is for you if you want to quit the time for money gain. So you no longer just want to work to earn money based on your time. You want to really leverage your talent or leverage your knowledge. And this is an excellent way to actually do that. Also for those who feel like it's time for more life, and less work and there so many of my clients are in this space right now you know they're at a point in their lives that they wish that they had more money so that they could relax off and enjoy life a bit more and uh, so if that's you this can be a great way to actually do that and of course as i mentioned it's great for coaches great for consultant teachers and certainly intelligent people who want to leverage their knowledge mind you i'll also say that uh us dumb people can create courses as well. So you don't have to be super intelligent. So don't see that as a barrier to entry. 
So uh, also employees that want to become their own boss, you know, that want to kind of shift. Um, one thing that I suggest is that you get in this, start learning how to do this before you quit your job, get the income rolling up. Once it hits a certain level, then you can jump out of your job and you can do this full time if you want. So entrepreneurs also who are looking for an extra income stream and of course those that want to get off the hamster wheel and live a laptop style of life. Now, uh, before COVID, uh, one of our goals was uh, to go over uh, to England and we were going to be based near London and we can basically run our entire business now uh, off a laptop. And uh, I know that sounds a bit jargonistic. You hear that a lot, people talking about laptop lifestyle. But the thing is, it does exist. And you can, in fact, you know, live a laptop life. You just have to create a structure for it. And this is an ideal way to actually do that. So this is a little bit about me. Uh, who am I? Well, I'm the guy with the exclamation mark in Rick. Uh, I really like to make statements. And I came from an advertising background. That was where I originated uh, from. That was my career. Uh, I knew what I wanted to do when I was seven years old through Bewitched. Uh, if you remember that particular series, I really liked what Darren Stevens was doing. And I jumped into advertising at uh, a very early age. Um, uh, I started at 17, actually. And then I went into marketing. I started working for News Limited after I eventually made, created my own advertising agency and then I sold that. And then I took some time off and then jumped into marketing with News Limited. I then went into sales, <laughs> reason why I was scared of it. And, uh, and I knew it was something that I had to learn because I find that when you're scared of something, you jump into it. And uh, it was a huge, very steep learning curve, but it was priceless. It really, really was. But it was where I got my big epiphany because there I was learning NLP and there I went from the bottom of the sales team, I was terrible at it, and went to the top. And that was due to my NLP training. I entered into the self-development uh, space in 2002. I studied as a life coach originally. And then I went on, of course, to further my education through NLP and became an NLP trainer and so forth with the company Life Beyond Limits. Uh, we started that in 2004, officially. It actually started a little bit before that, but we incorporated in 2004. And over the years, uh, we've produced hundreds of training videos and we've written thousands and thousands of training pages and uh, currently I'm sitting, I, I, I log my time as a, as a coach and a trainer and I'm currently at 25,000 hours of coaching and training. It's beyond that somewhere, but I don't know what the figure is. I've got to look at my spreadsheet to tell you. And uh, I've made around $4 million profit in, in training alone. And uh, so the thing is, this does work. It really, really does. Um, we're going to ramp this up now. Um, we're going to be focusing more and more in the online training space. So the core skill that I believe that I have is essentially, I believe that it's a, I'm, I'm really about simplifying the complex. And like, if you consider NLP or neuro linguistic programming coaching, it's, it's essentially it's psychology and it can be very complex. And I've learned over the years how to actually simplify, how to really work out how to identify a problem, work out where it is and help that person to shift that particular problem. So that's really my core skill and it goes very, very well for creating teaching componentry like courses. So um, most of my work was done in training rooms. Uh, this is one particular training room in Box Hill. Uh, I think this was the last master practitioner training that we ran, uh, which was a hoot. It was a lot of fun. There was a lot of familiar faces in that room and it was a real joy to teach. I love being around people. I love this space. And in fact, I've got to be taken out of the space uh, quite often because I love it so much. Um, but these days, because of the online courses, 
I typically work three days a week. Uh, I work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and the rest of the time, Monday, Friday, I often might do some work on the business. And of course the weekends are off. But um, when you focus largely, if I took the coaching out, um, I would hardly work at all. And that's because the courses sit there and people buy them and they're all automated. So there's not really much that you have to do. So it's a really good way to either supplement your income or turn it into a full-time business income. And it actually isn't that difficult to do. So um, this is where I live now. This is um, my most favorite surf beach. And uh, you know, back in 2008, we decided to um, move out of, uh, we were living in Camberwell in Victoria, uh, Australia. And we decided to move out of there to the coast. We now live in a regional area and uh, on the Sapphire Coast, and it is glorious here. It really is quite beautiful. And it's nice to be able to, you know, have income where you can have freedom to actually, you know, interact and engage in a space. Now, by the way, I will say, over the last seven weeks, I've been working seven days a week. So, you know, and that's because, you know, I invest my time to build this course, and uh, and once it's built, um, it will become quite automated and uh, it'll just be another um, quiver that we have to our bow when we're helping people to build businesses, create online businesses and so forth. So let's look at the market. Let's start from here. And I think this is a good place to start because it will give you an idea of essentially the size of the market. So these are some things that we've discovered about the online training space. So the first thing that people often think about is online diminished from, you know, offline, you know, live training. Now that's a concept that some people have, but the truth is the game is changing and there are many many online programs that are actually starting to become superior to live trainings and the reason for that is because what you can actually do these days is you can add things so easily and so digitally and you can jump from one media to another and this statistic uh, basically says that 79% of online learning, and we're going to call that OL just for the purpose of speed, online learning students uh, believe that online training is equal or better than live training. So that's a pretty big percent, and that percent is beginning to grow quite enormously. Now, the interesting fact is 57% of schools agree. When you would imagine that schools actually it's it goes against their model so it surprised me i actually would have thought that that would have been around 30 percent or something like that but many many schools are now bringing online training onto their platforms so it's adding to their live teaching so it's growing enormously students spend about 1.6 hours a week on online learning and that number is growing dramatically these numbers by the way are 2019 they're about a year and a bit old but my guess is these figures are going to change because i'm going to show you a slide fairly soon and you'll see exactly why so 77 percent of us companies used online learning so that's a very large percentage of companies actually do that because they can standardize their training so you can you know all your uh, shops, for example, uh, or stores in Texas can get the same sort of training that all the ones in Washington will get and all the ones in Australia and so forth. So it's a great way to actually standardize learning and many, many companies are jumping into this. So this is a growing industry. So it's also recognized that around $1,500 invested in online actually has an effect on the profit line and the and the percentage is 24%. So you could imagine that only $1,500 $1, invested in online training can actually increase massively their profit. 
So there's a big case for online training. Online learning cuts energy consumption by 90%. Now just think of this. This is gonna be a big game changer. Many, many companies are going to start talking about, of course, their footprint, you know, their carbon footprint and so forth. And this is, I, this is my guess. I believe that this is going to grow as people begin become to understand how important it is to green your business because we don't want to become become consumption heavy and particularly in industry. So this is also going to be it's not going to completely swing online I believe but it will influence it quite dramatically. So every dollar invested in online um, online learning creates an extra $30 in productivity. Now that's a pretty good ROI or return on investment. And the US government spent 2.59 billion in online learning in 2019. That's a huge figure. So here's the size of the market. So currently at 2020, we're sitting at about $188 billion in revenue from online learning. Now that's gonna grow substantially. So if you doubled that number, you know, you're basically looking at about what, 366 if you doubled it. Well, it's almost gonna double at 320 billion in 2025. That's just five years away from now, in fact, four and a half. So the market size is going to grow enormously in the online learning space. Now, let's say that you did your worst job at this and you created online trainings and you captured with your trainings 0.001% of the 2025 market. And of course, the number would be $3.2 million in a year. So the thing is that uh, there is massive scope for online learning and uh, it's quite amazing actually what you can earn, even if you have a very low cost course. Um, there are many, many people that uh, I've been working with over the years that have been selling like $19 courses, $47 courses, and actually making six figures with that. So don't think that you've always got to create high end, high cost type courses to really make any money in online. You can also do it with lower entry. So what I want to focus on now is I've identified that in chunking this training, there are 10 steps. So there's 10 steps to actually launch your online business. So I'm going to go through these steps. Now, the thing that you have to respect is that the actual time, the duration that this course runs for is, you know, it runs over 10 modules and those modules are sitting you know currently at anywhere between two to three hours so you know you're looking at about you know 20 to 30 hours i'm aiming to condense this all into an hour and a bit maybe an hour and a half so uh, i'm going to have to run fairly quickly through this and of course we can't give you everything because we just don't have the time to do that. But I'm hoping that I'm gonna give you at least a skeleton so you begin to understand how to actually build your online course. So the 10 steps to launch is the very first step is your passion. Now, why we call that the passion step is very much along the lines of, it's a very important start. What you will find is, imagine if you were a diver and you're swimming in the ocean and you just happen to see something that's shining, you know, at the bottom of the ocean. Now, if you start to think that perhaps that is treasure, what may happen is you're most likely to dive deep. That's what happens when you start with something that you love. If you start with something that you love, you will dive deep. You will begin to start looking at what you're going to get because you care about it, you love it, it's important to you, you're knowledgeable around that space. So things that you're quite passionate about, things that you care about, things that you have a deep respect for, 
are the things that you typically start with. They're the content. So I love self-development. I love neuro-linguistic programming. I love life coaching. I love presenting and speaking. And these are the things that I love. So I've over the years, I've dived very deep in these spaces. And my knowledge is very, very deep in those areas because I love those areas. It's an ideal place to start your course. So think about you know, something you care about, something you love. So uh, I'm gonna skip through these fairly quickly because we're gonna go in deeper. So the next thing is to test demand for your course to make sure that it is valid and it's got legs. It's actually gonna go somewhere. The next thing that you need to do is determine what are your outcomes, your key outcomes, you know, because that's a starting point for building your actual course. And of course, we move to the content, working out how to deliver the outcome, what content needs to be in the course. And then we'll put the content in sequential patterns to create what we call modules. So there'll be a module one, two, three, and so forth. Now, the next thing we've got to think about is the delivery. How are we going to actually deliver the course? And the next thing that we've got to think about is, are we just going to put it into a marketplace space? Now, there's marketplace and there's school. So you could build your entire business as a school would, you know, putting lots of content into your school and then delivering to students. Or you can just go to a school and deliver your content. So it's not your school, it's someone else's, but we'll talk in more detail. The next thing you need to do is produce the actual course itself, like film it, edit it, and get it ready, or produce your ebook or whatever it is, or your audios, or however you're going to actually deliver your content. Then the next, and this is a key ingredient, you've got to position it. And I'll explain how we actually do that. Position it so that the market knows that that course is for them. And finally, the launch sequence to make sure that people actually know your course exists and they're able therefore to purchase it. So basically they are the 10 steps and let's talk Firstly, on step number one, passion. So as I said earlier, pick a passionate course topic. Now, please understand that some people have an idea of what the word passion means. And some people have said to me in the, in, in the past, you know, I'm not passionate like you, Rick. And it's because they have a meaning on passion that might be different to my meaning on passion. So let me talk about what passion I think is. Passion is just something you care about. Passion can also be something you like. You don't even have to really love it. It just can be something that you've got a lot of interest in, something that you focus on, something you might obsess on, something that you might read you know, uh, quite a lot of books about, or something that you might study without anyone prompting you or asking you to do that. And that's a good place to start. So choose something that you love or perhaps even like or something that you're interested in. That's a good place to start as far as building a course. Think about your skills. Think about your talents. Think about your life experience uh, or experiences and think about what you can share. Is there something of value that you can give to someone? Now, the first thing I want to say about this is that, or actually the third thing I should technically, um, is that it doesn't have to be university standard. This is not academic. You are not creating a course that has to follow a model. You can pave your own roads. You can create your own course exactly how you want to do it. You don't have to follow anyone else's model. So don't think that you've got to be highly academic in order to create the course content. So I'm just going to turn the subtitles off for a moment. So the next thing uh, to think about is think of something that you're often teaching your friends to do. Like, is there something that you can teach them to do? Um, now, there was someone that I know that recently taught themselves magic card tricks and you know that's what they did but they did that via an online course 
So you can learn literally anything, anything you think of, it's in an online course. In our program, we have this massive list of all of these courses, all of the student numbers, the revenues that each of these have created so we can start to see what's popular, what's not popular. And, you know, many of our students have gone through those lists and thought, oh, I wouldn't mind teaching that or I wouldn't mind teaching that. And, you know, this is the research component, of course. Another thing to consider is teach what you love doing. You know, is there something that you really, really love doing? And uh, I think I've spoken enough about that. But given this, you know, even if it's teaching how to cook Moroccan fish. Now, I just did a little bit of a search and I discovered that there was a YouTube channel and uh, this particular one video had 40,000 plus views. Now, I know in the YouTube space that might not be considered, you know, like a real leader. However, 40,000 people have watched this video to find out how to cook Moroccan fish. Now, even though that it's free on YouTube, you could actually create a course that actually goes into a bit more detail and start and, and is professionally produced. And there are some people who are not gonna labor and go looking for content all over the place. They all want it in one particular space. And so creating an online course is a great way to actually do that. Step two, demand. Now, what, um, I like to do before I actually build anything is I test demand to see whether there is actually a market for it. That is, there are people that are interested in it. So what you uh, think about here is think about what is, you know, a course that you could do and then think about, is there some demand for it by putting it out in social media and just saying, Hey guys, if I created this course, who would, jump into this course. So just type at the bottom, I'm in. And typically what you'll find is you'll find a whole host of people that will jump in. Now, to give you an idea, I did exactly that with this course. And you know, I knew that there was demand because people were emailing me and posting messages and things like that, but I still wanted to test it. And I wanted to test it because I wanted to show my students how it works and what you write and what you post and how you post it and all of that. So I did just that so I could use it as a model. But the thing was that there was over a hundred people that said, I am in, I want this course. This sounds perfect. And uh, so what you do then is you now have a list of people who absolutely are interested. So of course you go out to that list and you say, well, I built it, have a look at it. And uh, it's an ideal way to do it. Instead of going through the whole process of building a course and then, you know, putting it out there and all you get, that's right, crickets, you get nothing. So you want to test it to make sure that you get a lot. Now, uh, we did the very first webinar for this this morning and the amount of interest was huge. So it, so I knew that because of what we did in step two, testing demand. So I highly recommend you do that. So test, test your t course title on social media. It says test our course title. That need, that's a little typo that needs correction. And then trial a training. And this is another little tip. You can actually get a group of your friends or family and get them together. By the way, they're often going to be the most critical, but you get them in a room or you get them online and you treat them like students and you get their feedback. And that is a great way to actually test your course because what you're asking for is, you know, can I go, do I need to go deeper in any of the modules? Am I going too deep in any of the modules? and so forth. So that's a great way to actually test. Now, um, I believe that the field of dreams is actually a myth. Um, a lot of people believe that build it and, you will, and they will come. And for those of you that remember the field of dreams with Kevin Costner, um, he was a corn farmer and he kept getting this message that he had to build this baseball field. And the moment he did, of course, you know, all these baseballers of old started coming through the fields and to play on his field. Now, um, it's a great movie, 
But the thing is, in reality, it doesn't work. You don't build and they will come. Um, it's costly, time-wise, energy-wise, when you get no one come. So it is much, much better, certainly, to test first. And now, people have been doing this for years. Now, Kickstarter, for example, and, you know, Indiegogo and, you know, fundable GoFundMe and CrowdRise and Publishizer and all these various companies, they specialize in putting ideas out there, funding these ideas, and then what happens is from that, you actually start getting income coming in already and you haven't even built it. And you can actually do exactly that. You can sell it first, get the crowdfunding, and then you package it up so they get you know bonuses or whatever. And then what happens is you can actually fund yourself. But of course, I'm gonna show you how to do this for free as well. Now, um, so basically the next level is moving to outcomes, content, and modules. So uh, if it's okay, I'm gonna put these three together because there's a lot of content to cover. Now, just to understand these, outcomes determine your student's final destination. So where ultimately you are going to go to. So for example, when I built Millionaire Master Academy, I had that came from so many people coming to me and saying, you know, I really want to learn. I want to learn how do I make my first million? You know, I'm now 40 odd years old and if I haven't made it already, chances are I'm not going to make it. And so you have, and I want to learn from you. How do you actually make millions of dollars? How does that work? What's the systems? What's the structure? What's the mindset? So we built Millionaire Master Academy to answer that question. So the outcome is to get a person who has never achieved becoming a millionaire and then get them in the program, teach them what they need to know in order to create the steps in order to become a millionaire. And there are certain ways that you need to think and certain ways that you shouldn't be thinking in order to get there. There's got to be things that you do with your investments, things that you do with your money, things that you, the way that you think about money. So there's mindset aspects, there's skill aspects, and there's certainly steps that you have to take. So that's the outcome point. So the next thing is the content. So in the context of Millionaire Master Academy, the content is what we put in their backpacks as they go. It's kind of the fodder that we give them, the food, the education, the knowledge, all the resources, the templates, you know, the, the connections, everything they need in order to make their first million. So, you know, for example, that course is priceless in that when people do it, they can learn what they have to do. And as they do that, you know, the return on investment is huge. Like uh, Millionaire Master Academy is, I think it's 2997, for example. Now, the thing is that, you know, if you pay around three grand for a course and you become a millionaire as a result, the ROI is massive. So that's the way you need to think of your courses. So the next and, and final part of this is the modules. Now, the modules is just language that tells us that we've got our content, we know what our outcome is, and so we're going to put modules, you know, specific modules in a sequence so that our content flows naturally, easily, people get it, people build on knowledge, people understand as they go. Because if you're teaching something new, you have to understand and respect that your students have not understood this before. They haven't learned this before. They don't know this. So you've got to put knowledge into the, excuse me, and then what you've got to do is create action points so that they put that knowledge into action. Uh, one of my mentors used to quote me, you know, to ad infinitum, you know, to do, to what, what was it? To know and not to do is not yet to know. It's an old Chinese proverb. And he used to say that action is really the most key point in learning. And it so is. So all your courses ultimately are built 
to create action points. And there's specific things that you do in courses to make sure that people actually do learn. Um, because what we don't want is we don't want shelf help, we want self-help. And that's really a key point. So a brilliant course always starts with a brilliant map and this is how you do it. So when we were building this particular course, um, we start with the outcome. So the outcome was how to build an online course, very simple outcome. And so then we thought, how are we going to get a person to do this? And we start brainstorming. And then with the, those ideas, we start putting them into a sequence. And what you're about to see is exactly that. So what we have been sharing is exactly that, where of course, up to you know the point of outcome content and modules so that is these are the modules now then we put a reason why we're doing the modules and that helps us to understand what is actually in those modules so you title the modules i like to keep my module titles very simple and then we put why those modules you know like for instance you know, delivery school, how will you deliver it, meaning the course. And so we know what that module is all about. Now what we've got to do is put content in. So, you know, we've put essentially all the content in the appropriate places to, so we can take the person in module one is passion and we intro the course, we give them the steps so they know where they're going. That's the big picture. And then we give them course ideas. So we start talking about all these various course ideas and why some courses are better than others and which courses, you know, create big returns, which create not many <laughs> much return. Um, and then of course we scope the market, which we have done. So you get a sense of the market in the, in the full program. Of course we go a bit deeper than that, but, you know, this is to give you the essence of how this is all put together. So what we also did is we changed the brief. And as I was building this course, I began to think, well, what, what's, what are the real keys to our success? What has, you know, made many of our courses sell very, very well. And, you know, it's one thing having a course, but it's another thing actually selling the course, having lots of people buy the course. So we added this bit. So the outcome changed. So instead of just being how to build an online course, it became how to build an online course and learn how to market it so that it generates high six figure returns. Now, in truth, um, the, as we were building it, we actually turned it, uh, we notched it up a bit more than that. We decided to actually teach people how to make millions out of their courses, but we didn't pitch it that way. Uh, we didn't want to uh, promote it as being a seven figure course, even though people can create millions from this content. The reason for that is we didn't want to offend and we didn't want to intimidate anyone who just wanted to make an extra $20,000 a year or an extra $50,000 a year. So the brief was now changed and this is what we ended up doing. So we went deeper and we had to go deeper with the content. So we added how to pre-sell your course and how to write teaser copy and we created templates and all of that. And then we also put in, you know, a million dollar webinar template, you know, how you actually do that. What do you say when and how and where, and we templated all that. Then we created also a high traffic platform. And this was a really nice piece. What happens is you can like, if you don't like marketing, uh, by the way, I suggest you love marketing. If you love marketing, you'll have fun. I was working with a client today, helping her with her marketing, and she's really getting it now. She's so good at writing things now because she's starting to learn the principles of it. And it, it was hard at first, and she didn't have a lot of fun with it, but now that she's getting a 
getting the gist of it. She's having so much fun with it and she's getting much better results. And so from that perspective, I really encourage you to love marketing. However, if you don't, we decided to put a component in the course that shows you a way that you can put your course in front of 50 million students and not have to market it at all and not have to learn how to copyright and not have to learn how to position and do all that sort of stuff. So, so what we've done with the course is we've kind of created a split. We've said, you know, partway through the course and actually in the early part, we say, okay, it's time to make a decision. You can now build your course to not market it, not sell it and all that sort of jazz, but we're also going to teach you that path as well how to sell it, how to write, how to also build a school. So this little high traffic platform was a really good module that we decided to put into the content. Also, there were some people who really wanted to learn how do I create almost like a Hollywood production? You know, how do I get my lighting right? How do I, what, what equipment should I choose? Um, what microphones should I choose? And all of that sort of, those sorts of questions. So what we did is we added, you know, how to create high quality productions. Then um, in the positioning, we started bringing more marketing elements, you know, how to actually really tweak your course title so that it is attractive. So we brought in more marketing elements, how to write great copy, ideal advertising vehicles. And then we also added in the launch phase, how to set up joint ventures. Uh, joint ventures is a powerful way that you can get your course out to massive, massive numbers. And uh, so we wanted to teach exactly how you do that, how you create great joint ventures and this specific strategy. But we also decided, and this uh, essentially happened when we got to our first trial uh, with this course, what basically happened is we discovered that some of our students were getting to the mindset part, you know, and what I mean by that is they were starting to get a bit overwhelmed, you know, starting to get a bit, oh, am I good enough to do this and all that sort of stuff. That's mindset. Anyone can do this. But here's the real kicker. One thing, if you haven't worked this out already, is one thing that I've certainly learned over the years is people don't achieve not because they're not smart or not even because they don't know what to do. It's usually because they've got a belief system in the back of their head from an old event somewhere in their lives that someone sold them on an idea that they're dumb or sold them on an idea that they're, you know, they don't finish things or sold them on an idea that became their identity. So what we decided to do was add another module. So there's actually another module in this program, which is dealing with all the mindset stuff. Now, here's the thing. Um, chances are, as we, um, we, we're launching this course fully next week, and chances are that we will have and build more modules around the mindset stuff, because that's, that's another one of our specialties. And the thing is that um, it's likely that we won't have another module. It's likely that we might have two or three or four. But if you build a course like that and all of a sudden you surprise your students by saying, oh, by the way, guys, we're going to actually give you more. No one's going to complain. No one's going to say, oh, my God, don't give me any more. You know, so from that perspective, that is the beauty of online. You can always add to it. Uh, for example, our Rich Mind program, which had been running for many, many years, just this year, we went through, we revised many of the modules, we cleaned it up, we added more content in it, and it's better than ever now. So you can do that with online, whereas if you do a live training, it's done. You can't redo it. Step six and seven. So step six and seven is the delivery. Now, this is when you've got to kind of work out how you're actually going to deliver it and where you're going to deliver it, uh, where people are going to collect it from. So how will you actually deliver your courses? There's many, many ways that you can actually do this. And that is that you can place your course on a marketplace where there are students already. Or you can place your course on your website and build 
you know, almost like a membership component or something along that line that drip feeds your content. Or you can build it on a particular page that you protect on your website that basically you put all the content there and, you know, they can go at their own leisure. So there are many, many ways to actually do this. And the thing is, you've got to think about how you want to do this. So also, what are the best schools to deliver them? If you're going to put it on a platform, what are the best ones that have huge students and actually work with your philosophies? Now, the question is, will you be a teacher or will you be a school? Now, that's the question that we ask in module seven. Let me give you a distinction. If you're going to be a teacher versus being a school, a teacher can teach in many schools and they own their content, not the school. The school doesn't own their content, they do. There's very little administration because the schools that they teach in manage the admin. There's less technical knowledge required. Now I'm talking about online, please get this right. I'm talking about online, not live teaching. Now, when we go the other way, when we go to a school, well, of course, you're going to be teaching in one school and maybe you might even build that school and we'll show you in the course if you want to do that exactly how to do that. Now the school owns the content and of course they own the school as well. There's certainly more administration work involved and it's more technical knowledge. But here's the thing, anything can be learned. So please don't think to yourself, oh my God, I'm not technical. Well, you're on a webinar, that's technology. You had to learn how to click the link. You had to learn, you know, how to watch, how to listen and how to make this happen. So that's some technical knowledge. And you learned that at some point and you can learn anything. You really, really can. Um, I used to consider myself not a technical person, but boy, I'm highly technical now. And it's only because I have dug deep and I've built many things and I know how technology works. Um, certainly I don't know code, but I know people who know code and, and can help me with that as well. Module number eight, now we're at the production phase. You know where you're gonna build it, you've got the content. So now you actually need to produce it. And there's a few ways to do this. So, you know, so what you need to know is how to actually film your courses, how to produce them, how to edit them, how to upload your courses, onto your platforms, onto your schools, and also how to look and sound like a professional. Now, the first thing that you have to know is that um, one thing that I realized in building this course, I thought, oh my God, I've been in this industry for a very, very, very long time. Um, so I worked in advertising for 18 years and that's just one little slice of my life. Um, that is me back in my advertising agency in my office. Um, that's when I had hair and by the way, the advertising industry, it gave me this new beauty makeover. Um, it was a stressful pressure cooker. It really, really was. But quite often what we were, it was fun too. We were working, um, here we're working with, uh, the Maccas, you know, Paul, um, McNamee and, uh, Peter McNamara and, uh, because our client was the Hotman Cup and so we did a lot of tennis shoots and a lot of tennis television commercials and things like that. So I've always been familiar with lighting and with editing and how to frame and all that sort of stuff and um, makeup and here we are on a shoot. Um, by the way, the police officer there in that photo is there not because we were in trouble. Um, he, was, he was a lovely man, but he actually blocked off the road so we could film a truck dropping furniture um, from the actual truck as the, the doors were open. And um, so we've also done animation uh, back in the days when animation was done old school, you know, done with cells and, and, and so forth. And oh my God, massive, massive task. And I've spent thousands and thousands of hours in editing suites. So the actual production and the techie side actually came to me very simply, but do understand you don't have to be techie and I'll show you how in a moment. So we've produced hundreds of hours of video and 
you know, manuals and all sorts of things. And this is just some of our programs. And the great thing is, the really cool thing is that we created our published program because many of our students said, how do I write a book? And we said, we know how to do that. Let us teach you. Um, you know, Millionaire Master Academy, which I mentioned before. Um, the introduction to life coach and NLP and the business of life coaching. We, we know, you know, we learnt how to actually get lots and lots and lots of clients for coaches. So we put that in a program. We called it the business of life coaching. Um, we created, of course, NLP life coach and NLP master practitioner, a rich mind and money masterclass and mastering timeline and all these courses and many, many, many more. But so when we talk about all those courses, this is a key piece. So the production is really a four step process. If you're going to do it with film and there's a quicker way to do it, which I'll show you in a moment, but if you're going to film, you typically want to write a script or have at least some ideas for us for what you're going to talk about. And then you need to film it. Of course, then you need to edit it. Then you need to take it through a process where you might upload it to YouTube or Vimeo or another platform. And then you're done. And now once you've done that process and it's now produced, you now have the content and you're ready to put it online. And so in the program, of course, we go really deep into how to write a script. So it's compelling. So people listen, so people learn. And we talk about the techniques of filming, how you specifically film, how you actually edit your production. And, you know, sure, at first it's a little bit of a learning curve, but it is doable. But I'm going to show you another way in a moment. The next thing is just prior to this, we spoke about script writing. There's three styles of that. One is to read from a script. So you can write a script and just simply read from the script. It's a very easy way to make sure that you cover off all your content. And perhaps you don't do the ums and the ahs and you know, the um, maybes and so, and all the little iterations that get in the way of sounding professional. That's one way. Another way is that you can bullet point and that's the style that I am using right now. It's just bullet points. There are no scripts. I'm just reading from the bullet points, which prompt my memory. I know my content. I built this so I can tell you anything I need to know or you need to know about this just by being prompted by the bullet points. So that's another style. Another way to do it, I don't like this style. I used to use this style, but that is essentially to wing it. And I don't think that's professional and people who do that tend to blah, blah, blah. And um, when I was building this course, uh, I decided that I really wanted to, even though we've been doing this for so many years, I decided to jump into some other courses. So I invested, a, you know, some thousands of dollars getting into other people's courses. And the reason was I wanted to see, was there something that I didn't know? Was there something that, you know, you might want to know? So something more current than what we've been doing. And one thing that I discovered is many of these trainers, they blah, blah, blah for far too much. And they get off topic for too long and you know, you could be sitting there like for some of the online courses and you'd be sitting there for an hour taking notes and you have a look at your pad and you've written three points. Um, sure, I know I've been in the space for a long time and maybe a new fresh student might be putting more notes, but I guarantee that some of these courses were terrible um, and some of them were quite expensive. So the thing is that a lot of that comes from when you wing it. So I don't like that style. I think it doesn't work as efficiently as actually bullet pointing or scripting your actual course. And you'll sound more, more professional in that way. Now, I did say earlier that there are some styles that you can actually produce content without having to go too techy or without having to be a whiz at the camera or be the talent in front of the camera and be highly proficient professional. But 
there are pros and cons uh, on each of these. So let me show you the three styles. So one is live. So you're in a room and you're actually being filmed live. Usually in a live setting, you have two cameras. So you can edit. Usually it's a one straight on you um, in a locked off position. Locked off just means it's fixed, it doesn't move. And then another, which is off to the side. And that way you can chop and edit and you don't get that you know, jarring effect if you've just got one camera, for example. So that's the live environment. The studio environment, you can just do with one camera and that camera is pointed straight at you. In a studio, you can use two cameras as well, but um, it tends to be less expensive to do studio work. And then there's the computer where you don't need any lights, you don't need any cameras, you can actually just film your computer screen. And there are many, many courses that do just that. Um, this is a little bit of both. You've seen me on camera and equally, you've seen my screen on camera. So let's look at them. The live creates more personality. And the reason it does that is because you've got an extra dimension. You've got the audience. The audience give you feedback and you sometimes come alive more when you've got an audience. Now, right now, I could classify this almost, although it's live, it's almost like a studio in that I can't see you. So therefore I can't get the feedback, um, which by the way, we're gonna stop this in a moment and I'm going to talk to you. So, um, well, not that I'm not talking to you now, but I'm gonna talk to you, ask you some questions and get you to engage and interact. So, so find out where the chat area is on Zoom because we're gonna be doing a little bit of a chat in a moment. So the thing is that the studio is basically, um, it, it's less personality because you don't have the audience, you don't get the feedback and the computer has little personality because you're just looking at a screen, filming a screen and there's no people there at all. Live, you have less control because it is live. There's no scripts. It's live and they're capturing you right now and that is it. Uh, you can't redo it or sure you can, but typically you are training live and we've done a lot of live filming and it, it's different. It's a different dynamic. The studio, you've got a lot more con control because you know, you're basically filming yourself without an audience. So you can stop, do something again, stop, do something again and keep doing it until you get it right. The computer, you got ultimate control. You can stop at any time, just keep filming, just chop that out, chop that out, chop that out. The live, you require more equipment because you typically need, you know, sound mics on both cameras. You often need lapel mics or a microphone that's close to your body. So you're not getting the interim sound between you and the back. Uh, you know, you've got the audience in the middle um, and your lighting needs to be better and all of that. Your studio, you need less equipment and your computer, you just need a computer. So a computer, even without a webcam, I'm working off a webcam right now, but you, you don't even need a webcam, webcam if you're doing the computer work. The live is more challenging to really master. The studio is less challenging and the computer is easy. And you know, if you look at costs, there is, if you're gonna do lots of live stuff, uh, you're going to have to spend somewhere in the vicinity of about three to five thousand dollars. If you're doing studio stuff, you can get away with about sort of fifteen hundred dollars thereabouts. If you're doing computer stuff, zero. You don't really need to spend. Well, you don't need to spend anything at all. Uh, you just need your laptop and uh, or your PC. That's it. You could even do it with your phone. So I prefer studio. I do a lot of studio stuff. Uh, and I've gotten used to actually talking to a camera and pretending it's a person. And that's what you want to do. That's a technique that you use, even if you are just talking to a uh, camera and there's no one behind it, you have to imagine there is someone behind it. Now, this morning when I did the webinar, um, you know, I, I went out to my family and I'm in my home right now. I went out to my family and, uh, you know, and I said, they said, how did the webinar go? I said, it was fantastic. It was great. I really loved it. And they said, it's 
And my daughter said, uh, or my oldest daughter Zoe said, you sounded like you were talking to a friend. And, uh, and I thought that was nice because I had lots of my students, you know, on, on the actual webinar this morning. And uh, so I was, I was talking to friends, just like I'm talking to friends here too. I know many of you. And uh, so it doesn't feel as foreign is what I'm saying. So the next thing you need to do is you've got to edit. So there are lots of freebies on the market. If you have a PC with Windows, you'll have Windows Movie Maker or you can download it um, and it's free. If you have a Mac, you can have iMovie. Again, it's free. There's Shortcut or Shotcut and there's many, many, many more and that is also free. There are so many software varieties. For me personally, I like Camtasia and uh, I prefer to buy Camtasia. Uh, I, I, Camtasia is actually, I think they give you a trial and that's it. Uh, there is no free version of Camtasia. But, um, you know, what I would suggest is if you're going to produce courses which you are going to film instead of doing just video, uh, sorry, just computer, I would suggest that you choose a software and stick to it. Whether it's a free or a fee, stick to it and master it and just keep using it. I'm a master at Camtasia. You know, I can use it. Others in, in the team can use it. You know, it works very, very well. Now we're almost at the end. Number nine, position. Now number nine is essentially what you're doing is positioning your courses so that they can actually sell. The real key here is to create attractive course titles and there's some real fundamental marketing skills that you need here. So in the course, we talk very specifically about how to actually title your course titles. Now here's a little tip. When you are titling your course title, um, I congregate around a lot of coaches. I coach a lot of coaches. And one thing that I'm often telling them is don't market a process. And many of them fall in love with the process. What I mean by that is when you have ING in your title, like, you know, starting your first business. No one wants starting your first business. People want to start your first business. So take your ING out of your course titles. Um, they just don't work. Now, one thing that I've really discovered over the years is knowing little things like that can be the difference to selling a thousand courses to selling five, a dozen, a handful. And it really does. It makes that much of a difference. Um, when you get this right, oh my God, the gates open and your bank manager will love you. Um, so that's certainly something that you really need to get good at. Write compelling copy. That's also what you need to get good at. Uh, so you are writing copy that engages. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this in a moment because we're going to talk about the psychology. So I see positioning as a four step process. So the first thing is you've got to understand who is your target market. Who is the person you, you want to help most? You want to know what their pain points are. You know, what keeps them up at night? What agitates them? What irritates them? You know, what do they want out of their lives? And then what you want to be able to do is know what their pleasure is. You know, what really brings joy to their heart? And so, you know, what you've got is two fundamental motivators, pain and pleasure. Then you position your course based on this information and you direct it back at your target market. That way you get loads and loads of people in your course. If you do not do this properly, then you're just creating a course that you like and you think you would like it. But the truth is you're not the target market. So an important place to start. Now, I said I'd talk about the psychology a little. There's two key motivators that motivate people, pain and pleasure. Now, I know some of the people on this uh, webinar right now, and I know you guys know this um, because I've taught you in NLP. 
The thing is that these two things are really key in your, in your course titles, in your scripting, in your marketing, because emotion is the best motive, the best motivator. The thing that you've got to think about, if you write copy for your course and you read it and it's all in your head, that is, you know, it causes you to think, it doesn't cause you to feel. If it doesn't cause you to feel, it's boring, it won't work. You've got to write copy that motivates feeling, that elicits a feeling. And even if it almost gets to the point that you're almost offended by it, that is still a feeling. So, um, as I said, today I was having a huge amount of fun with one of my clients who is, I'm teaching her how to create all these courses. Now, this is what it'll feel like. It'll feel like you're spinning your wheels for a while because you're going through all the science of how to get this right. And it'll feel like you're getting nowhere. And then all of a sudden, it's like your tires grip and bang, you got all this product and all of this, you know, all these courses and things start taking off. Now she's at that point now. And so she's got all of these incredible videos that she's produced and they are brilliant. She's done such a good job. I'm very, very proud of her. And today we were writing uh, the subject headers of the emails that go out to promote these actual videos that she's produced. And we're using these principles. And every single one of them, as we were reading them, we were getting a reaction. We were either laughing or, you know, being shocked by them. And that's the sort of thing that you've got to bring in to your marketing elements around your courses. So please remember that this is a very important tip. What I just gave you as simple as it is, takes a little bit of mastery, a little bit of practice to get this right. But boy, when you get this right, it's a game changer because 80% of success is in your headline. It's in your course title. 80% of success is in your subject header of your email. When you get these things right, you get people's attention and that's what you're wanting to do. So if you spend 50% of your time on your course title, 50% of your time on your subject header, 50% of your time on the headline in an ad, you will be doing really, really well because it needs to be in that ratio. And then you'll spend 50% of the time in your copy or in the copy of your email. And uh, so that's the ratio. So understand that it's the old Pareto law, 80-20. So 80%, you know, 80 of your results comes from 20%, which is your headline, which is your subject header in your emails. So it pays big to get this right. So let me show you a model. Now this is talking about your course title. This is, uh, we take all our course titles through many models to make sure that these course titles actually work. And the first is, is it compelling? Is it enticing? Does it create interest? And so the next, is it unclear or is it clear? So if we look at this, it becomes a matrix. So if we create a course title that is unclear and not compelling, it's not going to work. It just won't work. Regardless of how good the course is, your course title is really, really, really key. And I think I've got that point across, I hope. So let's look at some. So what I did firstly is I go with, and how I like to start course titles is just say it as it is. So steps to build an online course. So if you had to measure that, is it compelling? Is it clear? Well, it's certainly clear, but it's not really compelling. You know, it doesn't really motivate you. It's just telling you, I'm going to teach you steps to build an online course. And you know, therefore it doesn't really have any motive about it. No emotion. So then we, said, well, what if it became build an online course in seven days? Okay, so now it's got a bit of a promise attached to it. It's talking about build an online course and be online in seven days. So that certainly was a little bit more enticing. It was clear and it went up a little bit. It became more compelling. Let's do better. 
So we then said, okay, how about build a seven figure online course in seven days? So now it's even more enticing because it's got another promise in there, a seven figure online course. And of course, you know that we took that out of it in the finish. Then you could do even better how anyone can build a seven figure online course in seven days. I know that's very long, but you're allowed to do this in the land of courses. Um, you know, so that is certainly even more compelling because it's, it's, you're simplifying it. You're saying anyone can learn this. So this is how you need to think about your course title. This one module should help you enormously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, before we get to the final one, if it's okay with you, I'm just going to stop share just for a moment. And I'm going to ask what, what, what's your course title? I want you to think about this and I want you to just post in the chat section. I want you to post a course title. What is a possible course title? So basically what I want you to think about is what could you call your course? Do your worst work. This is how I like to work. Start off with your absolute worst suggestion. So let's get that out of the way. Come up with your crappiest course title. Now, many years ago, while you're thinking, many years ago, I used to run advertising creative departments. We used to have a rule. The rule was no idea is a bad idea. It's just an idea to start. It's just an idea to start. Now, Awesome, we're already getting some great ideas. Now let's start with Marilyn. Marilyn has written Dyslexia Uncovered. So let me put on my best coach for you, Marilyn. So <clears throat> when we look at the, the very first filter, enticing, is that enticing? Dyslexia Uncovered. Now because of the word dyslexia, it's identified the market, it's actually very clear. We know exactly what it's about. It's about dyslexia. So anyone who's dyslexic would get, you'd get their attention. So perfect, gets the attention of the market, but it says uncovered. Now that's the element that could perhaps make it enticing. If I said the measure was, you know, zero to a hundred, hundreds, absolutely so enticing. I'm buying it right now. So I would say that that, as a title would be somewhere up around 40 or 50. Now, the reason for that and the why I say that is it doesn't have enough promise in it. So it says that it's uncovered, but I really don't know what I'm going to get. So um, equally in the clarity stakes, it's about 60, 50, somewhere around there. So, you know, it's kind of level pegging when you want it to go further out. So think about what you are actually giving to your audience. You know, what are you delivering to your audience? What are they going to get? Think about a promise. Now here is a little piece that made a huge difference to my life. It was from one of my very early mentors. And he said to me, he said, Rick, you want to become a multimillionaire. You want to become a success with your business. Here is one little piece that I'm going to give you. And should you really get this, it's going to be the difference that makes a difference. So here I was pensive waiting for this little piece of information. And he said, the size of your business is determined by the size of your promise. So make a big promise. You can create a big business, make a little promise, little business. So think about that in the context of your title. So if we go to um, Marilyn's title, Dyslexia Uncovered, what is the biggest promise you can make with that course? What is someone going to get? What's the biggest promise you can make? Now let's jump over to Lee. So thank you very much, Marilyn, for contributing your idea here. And please, folks, be respectful. These are <laughs> these people's ideas. Respect them and say, right, that <coughs> excuse me, that's their idea. The next is Lee, stop anxiety now. Now, what I like about this, if we look at 
the enticing element of it, I would say it's up around 80% or an eight. Um, if we look at its clarity, I'd say that it's nine or 10, you know, we know very, very much what this course is going to give you. It's identified the market with the word anxiety. So it's going to be good for SEO. It's going to be good for all those reasons. It's a three word title, powerful. So Lee, full points. Um, there's not much that I can actually do to that title unless, of course, you increase the promise. So let me give you an example. It says stop anxiety now, but most of us are going to think there's no way on earth we're going to stop anxiety just like that. Um, there's probably going to be some time involved. So if the promise was stop anxiety in seven minutes, oh my God, you'd be thinking, how the hell can anyone stop anxiety in seven minutes? That's amazing. I've got to have a look at this. So that would even be more powerful than stop anxiety now because it just sounds bizarre, you know, that you could actually achieve that. So that would be a really good title uh, if you added that. Now, if you couldn't fulfill that promise, don't come out with that promise because you've got to keep your credibility. So um, if you could do it in, you know, 40 minutes or 47 minutes, um, you know, something along that line. Like if you come out with stop anxiety in 47 minutes flat, um, 47 minutes is better than 40 minutes. 40 minutes sounds like you made it up. 47 minutes sounds like, oh my God, that's on the nail. So they've obviously got a really clear process there. So um, Lee, great work. I think that's fantastic. Marilyn, great work. Now, also we've got uh, Chinma Chinmaya. Um, so lose weight without destroying your mind, body and soul. Now, I like that because of the promise. Now, this is, this is a, a technique called, you know, the toward and away headline, because what it says, the toward motivated aspect is essentially, you know, lose weight. There's a promise, uh, even though there's lose in the title. Um, so there's a promise there, lose weight or become trim or become your ideal weight without destroying your mind, body and soul. So it, it's got a really good promise in there. It, it's, it's a bit long, but that's okay. You, you can do that with your course titles. Um, imagine if you actually added another piece, put the time element in there, lose weight in 30 days without destroying your mind, body and soul, because it's not telling you how much. So maybe you could even add that element, lose 30 kilos in, 30 days without destroying your mind, body and soul. And that's got an even bigger promise. So I hope this is really helping you. Um, now I'll look at another one. We've got brave before broken. Brave before broken, manage stress before it manages you. Now, Paul, thank you very much for that. And you're giving me an opportunity to teach something. Now, brave is excuse me, quite clear. Uh, but before broken is a metaphor. What I mean about that is that um, we don't really know what broken actually is. We can only assume what broken is, you know, broken could be complete flat broke, broken could be completely depressed, broken could be almost dying. We really don't know what that is, because it's a metaphor. So another measure that we typically put our course titles through is the measure where we ask, is this a concrete idea or is this metaphoric? You know, is it vague? Is it ambiguous? Is it not specific? And that would fall into that category. The, the last piece, the what we might call the sub head of the course, manage stress before it manages you that's kind of suggesting what is the cause of being broken you know which is stress so that could be um you know a powerful piece in your actual course title so the thing that you've got to think about when you write your course titles it's got to be absolutely really really clear and choose very specific 
outcomes. Um, you know, like what the course title doesn't really have there, Paul, is an actual outcome. It tells you that you're managing stress, but it doesn't tell you that stress is going. It doesn't tell you um, what you're really going to get. You're just going to be able to manage your stress, <clears throat> which wouldn't be uh, as appealing as something like stress buster. Nuke stress forever. Um, you know, it's, it's a bigger promise. Um, sure, nuke is a bit of a metaphor, uh, but and you could be more specific than that, but that at least gives you an idea of how to actually write a good course title. Now, thank you very much, Paul. Now, I'll, I'll move on to one last one because Annette has also put hers up there as well. Family distance is no barrier. Let's get connected. Now, what I'm failing to see here is, is really what the problem is. Um, is it, you know, that your family is overseas or away? Um, I think I would like to see something in this course title that's a little bit more concrete, such as um, connect families from afar or um or seven strategies to connect families from afar so that tells you that if you are afar or apart uh, that there are going to be very specific strategies to to connect you i do like the word connected though um you know so maybe connected could or connect would be better than connected um so it, it has it, it's a it's a more specific outcome so this, I hope, gives you a little bit of an idea about your actual course titles. Now, I'm going to ask you one more question before we get to point 10. The question I'm going to ask you is how much money do you want to make from creating courses? Now, the truth is that you could create 20,000. You could create 5,000. Um, I, I really, um, I hate to say this, but I wouldn't get out of bed for that. You know, um, and that's quoting, what was the model who said I wouldn't get out of bed for 10,000, uh, any less than 10,000. But the thing is, think about this. Um, you can create any money that you want. And that's right, Naomi. Um, anyway, doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. But the I want you to choose how much money you want to make with online courses. So go ahead, pick a figure. You know, how much do you want to make from online courses? Now, I'm going to teach here. So I really want you to put, you, put it out, put it out there. You can always change it. But go ahead and put a figure. How much do you want to earn from online courses? Because I'm going to teach something in a moment. Okay, Lee says 75,000 or more in next 18 months. So doable, dude. So doable. Annette says half a million, 500,000. And equally doable. 7,000 pound per month. Absolutely doable. So thank you very much, folks, for putting that figure down. Now, for those of you who haven't put your figure down, put it on a pad write down right now how much you actually want to earn with online courses because you can do this part-time you don't have to do this full-time you really really don't you can do this in the evenings and keep your job keep your cash flow and then do your online courses build them start creating the income and then get to the point that you can just jump out of your job and make online courses your entire income so let me jump back to uh, our screen and uh, let's get to step number 10 which is essentially the launch so in the launch when my powerpoint is working here we go how to prepare your launch pad how to set your price for your financial goals which is why i did that previous question and how to light the fuse and sell like crazy so that's the launch phase um, now, 
What I want to share is what I call eight steps to the cash register. This is how I build courses, how I build businesses. I start from how much do I want to earn? You know, how much do I actually want to earn? Now let's, let me give you an idea. From this particular course, what I'm aiming to earn from this particular course is enough money to actually buy my wife a property um, that we can build a few houses on and uh, you know my wife can have a big vegetable garden and she can create the sort of lifestyle that she really wants. So that's my goal for this particular course. Now when you create a goal, let's say the goal is 100,000, let's say you want to create 100,000. The way to think about this is let's say it's 100,000 and to get that you're saying that you you know you think you can get about 200 students into your program at about $500 per course. So when you decide on 100,000 and your course is around $500, then you've got to work out how many students do you need to get in order to meet that goal. If you start at this end, it's going to be much much easier to build everything based on your goal. A lot of people start businesses and this is how they start them. Oh, that'd be a really good idea. How about we do that? Yeah, why not? Let's start the business. And then all of a sudden they get to a point, they go, we're not earning enough. Why? Because they didn't start at the right point. So I start all of my businesses with a financial goal first. So if your goal is uh, 500,000, and uh, you know what you want is you want 500 students so it's got to be about a thousand dollars per course in order to make that you know per year if your goal is much smaller than that and you just want to make twenty five thousand dollars and let's say you know think you think you can get about a hundred students into your program at two hundred fifty dollars per course you know and if your course is twenty five dollars all of a sudden it's a thousand uh, a thousand students that you really want to get in the course. So the point is really to start at the actual amount that you really want to earn from your course. And then that will determine the quality of the course, the depth of the course, how many people you expect to get into the course. And that creates essentially your income. I call it eight steps to the cash register. There are actually eight steps involved. Um, but essentially this is step number one work out how much you really want to earn. So you've put your income goal in the chat area and I've jumped ahead of myself. So you've already done that. But if you haven't done that, make sure that you put it on a pad. So you go, that is my goal. That is how much I want to earn. So let me show you how to actually reach that particular goal. So these are essentially the 10 steps and of course there's a great deal of detail in each of these steps and you follow each of these steps very sequentially in order to launch and get your courses out there. Now if you haven't produced online programs before it can be a little bit daunting. Sure there's a it's a learning curve but anyone can actually do it. So the question, is it okay if I show you a fast way and an easy way? And this is a way that you can basically do this a lot faster because of course there are other ways that you can do this. And I want to introduce you to Income Incubator. Now, let me explain what, how we came up with this particular title. The, this particular course is very much geared to income. It's basically about creating an income for the students. Sure, we're going to teach people how to actually build the course, the structure of how they do that, how they market it, all the elements. But the outcome is very, very clear. I decided a number of years ago that I wanted to be a speaker, I wanted to be an author, I wanted to be a trainer, I wanted to be a coach, you know, I wanted everything. And the problem was, I got everything. And I can remember I was on a flight coming back from Sydney. This is how it worked. I was at my clinic, I was coaching. I had a talk to do in Sydney that evening. 
I finished my last session. I'd been working from seven o'clock in the morning. Um, I jumped on a flight. I can't remember what time, it's still daylight. So probably four or five o'clock. I jumped on a flight to Sydney. I paid the cab extra money to drive me there to the venue really quick. I came into the room, they were announcing me. And then I stepped up onto the stage and I did my talk. And then I got off the stage after 45 minutes and I shook a few hands, said hello to a few people, said goodbye, jumped in another cab, raced back to the airport, got on the plane, and then the air crew said to me, you really need to thank the gentleman on your right and the lady on your left, because you spent some time on her shoulder and a little bit of time on his shoulder. I was knackered, I was so tired, and this was my life. And I realized that I didn't want that life. I didn't want that crazy, crazy jet setting life. And I, you know, I wanted my family. I wanted to, I wanted to enjoy my career. I love this career. I really, really do. But I wanted to design my life in another way. And now, as I shared earlier, I typically work three days a week. You know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are my coaching days. I'm solid. You know, coaching people in that time. And uh, by Thursday night, I'm tired you know i'm tired i've put my all into my clients i love my clients i've got awesome clients and the thing is that um you know i need rest as well and and i've been burnt out i've been burnt out three times in my life i'm a very passionate guy and i if i'm going to do something i'm going to do it well but these days i create space I go surfing, I spend time on the beach every morning. I take my dogs uh, out for a walk with my wife. We enjoy a coffee um, and that's my lifestyle. But it came from online courses. So when we built this, we decided that we were going to be very focused on helping people to make money. Sure, I want your courses out there to help people. I care for that too. And it's not this or that. So it's not about the money. It's not about helping people. It's both. It's about the money and it is about helping people. I care for humanity a lot. But the thing is this, this course is designed very specifically to make you money. And sure, I want to show you how to change people's lives and help people with your content as well. So that's why we called it the income incubator. It's about putting your eggs in there and turning them into your nest eggs, turning them into your investments. When I die, which will happen one day, you probably say sooner the better. No, I'm joking. But the thing is this, uh, my family will continue earning from all the courses that are earning us income on automatic. And uh, why would you turn them off? And so that's the way I, I view this course. It's really about incubating ideas and incubating ideas that turn into income. That's why we called it the income incubator. And it's an, an alliteration. Alliterations are quite often good in your titles. You don't have to, but they sometimes become catchy. So income incubator is something you're going to hear me say a lot and it's going to start to become a product. Now, we put a tagline, online courses made simple. We, it was going to be, you know, build a seven figure online course, but we didn't want to intimidate people and we didn't want to put off anyone at all. You know how I really care about the underdog and, you know, anyone who is challenged with money and I didn't want to intimidate any of those people. I want anyone who wants to create more income in their lives to be able to do this. So that's the background as to how we came up with this as a title. This means something to me. So it, it usually helps when you create a title, create a product that really means something to you. And, it, and this is a cause. And I'm really excited about this. This is a new generation um, in our business. 
and uh, it's something that I'm going to be focused on quite a lot. I love it. So here is essentially how you can do this really fast. So what we have done is the program from here starts to move into webinar format like this. And uh, we've got basically a number of webinars. The first is passion. And the first is really eliciting your course ideas, getting them out of you. And we've got systems, structures, templates, strategies to do that. So, you know, this worst case scenario, you'll in this webinar, you will discover who you are and what's important to you and all that sort of stuff. So that's where you want to start your why, your essence, your reason. And I remember when we did this very first webinar, uh, our students were really excited. It was a lot of fun. There was a lot of laughter in this particular webinar. Um, and then it gets a little serious. <laughs> so next is demand, how you set up your landing pages, how you set up, and sorry, not your landing pages, how you set up your templates to create interest, how you write them, how you, um, capture the data, all that sort of stuff to test demand for your course. Then is developing your outcomes so that you, you know, outcomes aren't just something that you come up with. You actually need to design your outcomes and be very, very clear on what those are. So there's a big marketing focus as we go through these. So you're getting it right from the very word go. Then how to build your content. We show you how to do that quickly. Most people can spend weeks, weeks, weeks and months building content. We don't agree with that. We think you should build fast. And so we'll show you techniques to actually elicit. Once we work out what your course is, how to actually elicit the content that meets your outcome and then how to put them into modules. Then next, we're going to talk about where you're going to deliver. So we'll start looking at various delivery mechanisms and we start measuring one against the other so you can start making a decision as to what's going to be the best delivery mechanism for you and that determines how you're going to do the next step which is are you going to build a school or are you going to place it on a school and we now start exploring this we'll actually show you how you can get in front of 50 million students who are paying money for courses and really, really cool. Then we're going to show you how to produce, how to, if you're going to film, how to do that, how to set up your lights, how to use green screens, how to, what equipment to use, um, how to get the best quality, you know, if you want to go Hollywood and then how to do it for free, how you can basically do it with no money whatsoever. And I, like that you can do that because you know you should be able to learn how to do it with no money down whatsoever and how to do it at the high end as well how to position your actual course so that you really understand exactly who your market is and we've got a template that takes you through that so you can really get very very clear on who they are this is going to save you so much think time further down the track and it's going to help people to really connect with your course very quickly. Then we're at the launch phase. The launch phase is basically how you build the structure to make sure that you finance yourself really quickly. So you make money really quickly and how you make sure that you put it in front of the right people and launch it powerfully. So that's a real key piece. Now, um, we found that uh, the mindset stuff, which I was talking about earlier, really needs to be in this course as well. Now, it actually suggests that we're gonna do 11 webinars. It is likely we will do more than 11. But the thing that we're going to do is we haven't done um, module number 11 yet. We haven't tested that. We've tested everything else except for module 11. Mind you, we've tested the content of module 11 in our coaching and in many other areas. We know what to do, but we do want to test it. So we might decide 
after we've tested it that we need a module 12 or we need a module 13. And I'm sure you're not gonna be concerned if we give you even more. So basically when we look at all of this, the total value of this will be 4997, but hang around because I'm gonna do something really crazy. So that's one component. The next thing that we've recognized is that people need support. And so what we've created is six 30 minute one-on-one -on -one support structures that um, you're not gonna be working with anyone else, you'll be working with me, and my job will be to support you to make sure that you've got everything that you need in place and anything that you're not sure about, we can fix that. Anything that you need to understand at a deeper level, I can give you that. So basically that will be done on Zoom and uh, so we can look at screens and all that sort of stuff. We can look at setups and help you if you've got any problems, this is the piece to do that. Plus. There's going to be three months of email support that goes with this program as well. So that means that you can ask any question, uh, if there's anything that you need to know or need clarity on or need links to something or templates, we essentially can do that. So the value of that is two and a half thousand for the support. So here is essentially what you get. You get 11 webinars, which take you through all of the 11 modules you get all the support, you get the, the uh, email access as well. So you've got the written support, the, the visual support and the content as well. So that comes to 6497. Now, what has the program done for others? And this is a very important piece and you're gonna have to do this too in your courses. And these were the people that came into our very first program when we ran the income incubator and Matt who's a lovely lovely man uh, from fork in the road he said before doing this course I was stuck spinning my wheels trying to get online now many people are like that they just don't know what to do and they go researching and looking at all different places and they end up with a whole cacophony of all sorts of ideas from different people with different ideas and they start conflicting. And as a result of that, they just get confused. And Matt got confused. He didn't know what to do. So this got him past that point. And he then fleshed out his courses and now he's producing content like crazy. And he says that he's looking for a whole new level of income and freedom. So he's now on that path. Sally, is just a little bit further ahead. And that is that she said, this course is everything I needed and I'm already getting students signing up for my courses. So she just finished last week and she is already getting students coming into her courses. And she said, this is high quality, high value information that you can only get from someone who's been doing it successfully for years. Sure, it stretched my boundaries and challenged me but I got results so quickly. I can now see what to do, hear why it's so important, and I now know how to build any course in a snap. And uh, she's going crazy with her mindset money box. And um, very, very clued up in the real estate space, by the way. And uh, so Sally basically is out producing already. Akiko is the Get Things Done coach and uh, a very productive lady, as you would imagine with her title. And she said, this course takes you by the hand over every single step in delightful detail to create, build and market your online courses. Even if you've never built a single course and believe you are not good at the techie stuff, and especially if you don't have the financial resources right now, you will soon be able to produce content and share your knowledge all around the world and making money while you sleep. And that's the idea of Income Incubator. Alex said, um, it's great usable content. He said, the course is amazing. So much great usable content, including marketing gold. I now have a straightforward plan from concept to release for any online course I choose to make. I'm easily creating engaging content. Can't wait to see my passive income increase. So Alex was an absolute delight in the course. He's a very funny man. And we had lots and lots of laughs. 
And, um, you know, these guys are now out doing it. And uh, of course, I want you to do the same. So I'm going to add some incredible bonuses. So if you already made up your mind, let me reward you even further. So the first thing is um, we're going to give you an actual bonus that comes with this now. And it's our marketing magic program that shows you actually how to write copy that sells and avoid the costly copy mistakes. Now, this can improve your results massively. Much of this stuff is templated. So instead of having to, sure, it teaches you how to actually write better copy and how to create better marketing, but it also gives you templates. So you can either just go straight to the templates and not even care about learning marketing, just use them and get them working for you. Or you can use the program to actually teach yourself how people think, how marketing actually works. This, this is absolute gold. It's valued at 297, but personally, I think it's worth a hell of a lot more than that. Um, when you use this with your course, then it really creates an incredible difference. I'm going to give you another one. This is our course cost calculator. One of the things that is a big challenge for people is how much do I charge for my course? And so because we've been doing this for so many years, we've got a really good idea of what courses cost and the actual, we've got measurements that determine what to charge. So we just don't pluck a figure out of the air. We actually follow, uh, you know, the market, we follow templates. And so this was actually built. Uh, I've been doing this basically using uh, a template, but I wanted to build something that people in our course can actually use. And it's really simple. Let me show it to you. This is the course cost calculator. What happens is essentially you put your data in there, you answer the questions to the left, you put your data in there, and then it tells you what your course should be um, costed out from to, so it gives you a from and a to price, and then it gives you a suggested course price. Now here is a little piece of marketing gold. One thing that we do is we put a seven on our course price. So if I was doing this with one of my courses, I would look at the suggested course price and instead of it being $1,510, I would charge this out at $1,497 or $1,477. Seven is a powerful number. It really, really is. We have a program called the Rich Mind Program and it normally retails for $497. For little spaces of time, we will drop the price dramatically to $7. And the thing is that particular uh, course, we've tried charging $12. We've tried charging $5, but $7 works better than any of those prices. We just sell a lot more at $7. It's a magic number. And anyone that's anyone in this space will tell you that. So just a little tip. Now, of course, I've spoken about the Rich Mind program. It's a really good program. And I know, you know, many people who are on this webinar have actually experienced the Rich Mind program, but we're going to give it to you again. And the reason why is because it gets you in the right mindset and it's, it's kind of a little magic when you couple it with a program like this because I can't explain it fully, but when you really get this program and, and follow it, it just, it creates magic in people's lives. It's a, it's a program that's highly popular. We've had thousands and thousands of people go through this program and people rave about it. And I love it. You know, even though it's a very low price course, I love it. It's, um, it's a good course. So here's a little tip. When you create bonuses, now I did say that, you know, we price it for a limited time at $7, but when you put your bonuses, always put them at full retail price because it stays the same. Even if you discount it down, discount it up, all that sort of jazz, or ra even raise it, keep it at your RRP or your recommended retail price. So you also get the Rich Mind program with this as well. 
So here's a summary, uh, essentially what you get. You get the 11 web webinars. You also get the support Zoom sessions. You get the three months unlimited email access. You get the marketing magic. You get the course calculator. You get the Rich Mind program. And so the total value is 8388. Um, now, when I finally get to the price, you probably, I hope you're going to laugh. I really, really do. But the first question I'm going to ask you before you do that is, can you do this another way? And the truth is you can. The way that you could do this is you could do a marketing course, a film course, a copywriting course, a web development course would also be handy. And you would probably pay three times as much at the, as this price that I'm going to reveal to you in a moment. So yes, you could definitely do it that way. You could also do it this way. You could also troll the internet for years, but I want to give you a little tip here. I know many people who do this. They uh, have this mentality where they don't go out and they invest in themselves. They go and try to get things for free and there's a lot of resources for free and that's a okay. But I see people do this in the course development space in marketing space, in um, self-help space. But the problem with this is you'll go through so many doors, getting so many pieces of content. And I coach people who are confused about marketing, for example, and building courses, for example, because they've done just this. And they say, this person says, do it this way. And this person actually says, do it that way, which is completely different to what they've said. And they get themselves to a point where they just get confused and therefore they don't do anything. They get overwhelmed. Overwhelm is a strategy for doing nothing. And so this is a perfect way to get yourself overwhelmed. Sure, in some spaces you can do it, but I wouldn't suggest it. So today I will really, really want to make it easy for you. The truth is there really is no comparison to what I'm about to give you. And so I want to really drop the price because I want to make your day and I want to make this webinar amazing. So I'm going to make an amazing with an amazing offer. And these are the reasons why I want our students to really dominate in that $320 billion market, you know, in 2025, I want our students to do exceptionally well financially. So, that you can be our success story. So we can put you up and say, this person has made X million dollars, this person, and not every, now please, not everyone wants to make a million dollars. And, and don't degrade yourself if that's not your goal. You know, making an extra 50,000 or 20,000 a year is fine. And that equally is notable and we would put you up as saying, you know, that you made an extra $20,000, you know, with just investing a little bit of time, which can easily be done. So I want to make this so attractive that you will have to say yes to this. So because after today, this is what we're going to do. The price that I'm going to give you now, after tonight, after midnight, we're going to actually double this price. You guys were the first ones that jumped into this and we're going to honor you in the best possible way. This is going to be the lowest price that we're ever going to do this for. So the 8388 of value, we're going to make it 997. So that includes everything, all the support, all the modules, the entire course you're going to get for 997 or you could pay five five two forty seven dollar a month and uh, you can have the entire course so this is what you do if you want to be in this is what you do and we're giving you a 30-day no questions asked complete guarantee so if for whatever reason I'll go back just so this is really clear if after 30 days you decide that this course is not for you then just simply contact us and no questions asked, we'll just refund you. Um, if you pay by Stripe, we'll just go through Stripe, we'll just refund it. If you go through PayPal, again, same deal, we'll just refund it. And it's, it's just really a click. That's all it is and it's all done. 
Of course, what we want to do is within 30 days, we're going to impress you so much with what you get that you're going to think to yourself, I would be crazy to give my money back right now because I can see that I'm going to make a lot more by completing the program and putting my courses online. But we want to create this opportunity for you because the truth is that at the end of the day, there's no risk to you. I'm taking basically all of the risk. So this is what you do. So basically all you do is you go to the website um, and I'll give you the link in a moment and you just go to the website and the website is lifebeyondlimits.com.au forward slash online hyphen courses hyphen made easy. And I'll even put this link in the chat section in a moment because we're going to go to some Q and A's. So all you have to do is just click there if you want to do the five payments or just click on the button if you want to get the biggest discount and just pay the 997 and that's all you do and it ends midnight tonight and so of course we want you to take action grab this now if this appeals to you if you can get a sense of that you could actually reach that goal that you wrote on that piece of paper, then this is gonna be one of the best investments that you've ever made. And I'm gonna make sure that you get success because we call this our 30 day success or your money back guarantee. So basically it's 997 for today only or five monthly payments of 247. And that is the actual link. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to stop share and I'm going to answer any questions you're asking. Now, um, is it, uh, I'm getting a question from Julie and that is, is this Australian dollars? Great news to you because you're in the UK and there's a good translation right there. And the answer is yes, it is it is in Australian dollars. So you're going to do even better um, because you are in pounds or sorry, um, Euro. So um, any other questions about this, uh, this particular program? Actually, uh, I've got a question from Lee, change my target to 2 million, I think. Yes. Am I counting the zeros correctly? Yes. 2 million or more at 2k serving 200 people relationship with customers in an eight week campaign in under 12 months. Now, scarcity or urgency. <laughs> Thanks, Guru Rick. <laughs> so the thing is that um, what this program is going to do is just so we're really clear with this, this program, once it is completed, like once you've completed it, what will happen with the content is you will essentially have lifetime access to this content. So anytime you want to go back and redo a module or you think to yourself, I'm going to build another course. How did I do that bit? Or how did I do this bit? You can go back and you can go back into the program and you can revisit the module. So it's going to, once you've done it, it's going to be there for you for life. We do that with um, the lion's share of all of our courses. Uh, except for Rich Mind, it's the only one that we don't do. But in truth, people get emails and once they get those emails, they can keep doing the course over and over and over again. And by the way, if you're in Rich Mind, you haven't worked that out yet, but uh, you now now have. So are there any other questions that you have um, around the course or any challenges that you have or anything that you need clarity on? So go ahead and ask. Now, what I'm going to do while um, you are thinking up various questions that you want to ask, I'm going to put into the chat box um, the actual link. So I will uh, promise I'll send this to you in an email as well. Um, I'll also put um, this morning's webinar I'll also put that in a link. So if you want to go back and have a look at anything that I've shared today, it will also be there for you as well. Um, is this a weekly course structure? Yes, it is. So basically the way that the course will run 
is that um, you will you will basically get module one, then we give you an entire week to do what you've got to do in order to be ready for module two. Then module two, again, another entire week, and then we'll be going, look, my guess is, my, my hunch is that, my hunch is that knowing me, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be putting more into this course than I have offered right now. And so it is highly likely that the course is probably going to, it's, well, it's definitely running for 11 weeks, but it's highly likely it will go for about 13 weeks. For example, the first group, um, I announced to them at the end of, we did it every Monday. And at the end of Monday, I said to them, look, guys, uh, one more, let's do, let's do at least one more. And so it's likely to happen to you. So what platforms do you recommend? Teachable, Thinkific, Podia, Kajabi, Academy of Mind. Why? Um, the truth is, Lee, there are, that is such an in-depth question to ask today. Um, there are, all of the platforms have their pluses and their minuses. Um, Kajabi, for example, is a good platform. It's very expensive though. Um, now, what I do in the course is we look at all of these Teachable, Thinkific and, you know, all these various uh, platforms and we look at each of the pluses and the minuses and there are many and there's so much data and so much detail. Now, one of the pros for some of these are that they're very, very cheap. In fact, there are some that cost you nothing, absolute zero. So um, it really depends on your financial position as to which one you choose. Then it depends on your, your technical willing to learn, your technical ability or your willingness to learn. And there are others that you need no technical ability whatsoever and you don't need any money whatsoever. So it really depends on a number of variables. So. Um, I haven't really answered your question really fully, Lee, but um, I can I can give you more insights in more detail, you know, offline. Are there any other questions that you have, um, given the fact that uh, it is now 9.06, so we have been here for quite a, a while. So um, final question, or what we'll do is we'll wrap this up. Uh, so please, if you if you want this course, jump on now, grab it now, and uh, either do the five payment plan or get the biggest discount by just paying it outright. And uh, now, oh, there is a question. What other costs are involved in setting this up? That's a really good question. There are, it, it really ranges from zero to about $3,000. Um, and when I say zero, zero is when there are ways that you can film your course. Like if you've got a smartphone, iPhone, they are actually sufficient. You could use them. You don't have to get high level equipment. So if you have an iPhone, if you have a laptop or a PC or a Mac, you can basically, uh, there are no ongoing costs. Equally, if you decide to place your uh, course on a, you know, there are some platforms that we introduce you to. Some of them cost you nothing, absolute zero zip. So after the cost of this course, there really won't be any other cost whatsoever. Now, the other question you're asking is, would you be recommending a budget for Facebook advertising, for example? Um, my simple answer to that is no, I wouldn't. I, I actually wouldn't even recommend Facebook. Um, there are so many people who are losing money on Facebook. And, you know, you see a lot of advertising on Facebook. I'm going to show you much. I'm going to show you how to get advertising for free. Um, I'm going to show you how you can basically, you know, start marketing your course out there and get a lot more clients than you'll ever get on Facebook. And, um, and you know, many of the strategies will cost you nothing. Um, 
I'm a big fan of bootstrapping a business. And for those of you who haven't heard the term bootstrapping, it's financing your own business. But I have a saying, and I say this to my clients quite often, and that is lean bootstrapping. And that is aiming to build a business with as little money as you possibly can. In fact, the, the biggest investment you will make is this course. And then that's it. You know, sure, there are other people who want to be, you know, want to be more techy and, you know, want to, you know, pay, you know, $30 a month for a platform and all of that. But you don't have to do that. You really don't. What I suggest to our students is start lean, start really lean. Don't spend anything, you know, don't spend anything on cameras, anything at all. And then take yourself to a point where you start making really good money and then you can start splashing around if you want. But don't, even if you've got lots of money, do not invest in businesses too heavily um, because that way you've got to create too much profit to break even. I'm a master at being able to create profit in my first year in businesses because of these strategies. But I'll be sharing a lot more in the course as to how you actually need to think, what you need to do in order to create a business that rocks. And, uh, and a business that can start with rocks. You know, um, there, there are ways to do it. In, and I've, I've now been in two recessions. I know how to handle recessions. And in fact, I now know how to thrive in recessions. And uh, I'll be giving you a lot of business advice as well as, you know, the online advice. My investment is in you being successful. So I'm going to leave it at that because I want to respect your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for those of you who are still here um, because, you know, I love you for the fact that you have stayed for the entire time and uh, you, you have invested a lot of time here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, I will promise that um, I've been very scarce in the webinar, webinar space. Um, but I will make sure that I will give a lot more to you guys over this year um, and give you everything I possibly can. And thank you very much, Paul, uh, for your thanks. And uh, Julie, thank you very much. And uh, thank you, everyone, for being on this webinar. Have an amazing, amazing evening. And please, farewell during these weird times. And uh, if you need anything at all from us, please don't be afraid to ask. Um, we're here to help. So please, I hope to see you in the course and I will absolutely do everything I can. And Julie, you wanted the link again. There it is, because as people talk, the link just keeps going up higher and higher in the chat. So I'm gonna send you an email, I'm gonna sit down I'm going to do exactly that now and I'm going to give you the replay from this morning. I'm going to give you the link again and um, hopefully I'll see you guys in the course. Bye for now. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening and uh, talk to you really, really soon. Ciao.